Hello, my name is Aaron, and let's talk about me. So, 2021 was not a great year by most measures, but some things went okay. So in order for me to get some closure, let's go over some of the high points by checking out some stats. First up is finance. Scott Galloway is one of my favorite people to listen to online. If you aren't following already, check out his Pivot podcast. It's insightful and funny and poignant many times. What I like most about Professor Galloway is how he combines humor with really clear blue flame thinking and insights. This quote I have here, We live in a capitalist society, and economic security is not only important, I think it's your obligation as a head of household. It really resonates with me. Although I'd probably change the head of household part to breadwinner, because at least in my household, I might be the one earning the money, but it's safe to say that it's my wife who leads the household. Let me start by acknowledging that financially in 2021, I was pretty privileged. It really speaks to the different kinds of Americas that we live in, that there are so many people who are struggling this year, and yet I had one of the best years of my life, financially speaking. I've got a stable job at a big tech company. I've been working in my field for 20 years and command a high level of compensation. And to top it all off, the stock market is hitting new records. In addition to compensation, this year I executed more stock trades than I think in any previous year, certainly more than in 2020. My stock market strategy is simple, and I've been using it since 2003. I buy stocks that provide dividends. I try to purchase at a point where it looks like they have the potential to still increase, and I sell when I recognize a 10% gain. This means that even in times when the stock is down, I'm still earning. And by realizing gains, I can keep some liquidity to be able to take advantage of momentary price drops. Now, I'm betting this isn't the best strategy for making money in the stock market, but it has given me a pool of money that I've been able to grow over time, and the focus on dividends moves me closer to the goal of someday being able to pay for my lifestyle without having to have a J-job. All right, now let's talk about hobbies, of which I have plenty. Uh, as anyone who follows me on Instagram will know, my main hobbies in 2021 were reading and plastic miniatures. I painted 67 miniatures. This is up from the 65 I painted in 2020, so I feel like I'm making progress. I find painting miniatures rewarding and meditative. And with coronavirus still going, I haven't really had a chance to use them to play any games. But maybe this year, if we can get our collective acts together and beat the virus, we'll be able to get back out to the game store and roll some dice. This year also saw my first brush with virality with a post I did of a newly painted miniature. Sure, only about 150 likes, but it's the first time a post I had got to triple digits. The figure you see on the left is an earlier version of the figure on the right. I painted it back in the 90s. And while my painting skill is still not the best, I think it's pretty clear that I'm a better painter now than when I was a teenager. 2021 was also a great year for me for reading. I really got back into books and took full advantage of the library system to feed my need. I like to encourage my daughter to read books, and it's important to me to model the behaviors I want her to emulate. I still probably spend more time than I should staring down at my phone, but at least she's seen me read. My favorite book this year was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I described it as a Harry Potter with real stakes, and I'm not the only one who thought it was good. It's done well enough that there's a sequel out now that I'm eagerly anticipating becoming available at the library. If you haven't read this book already, I definitely recommend it, and you can find an affiliate link to Amazon down in the comments. Last up, let's talk about fitness. I'm not someone who spends a lot of time lifting weights or riding a stationary bike, but I do have some things I do to try to keep myself in reasonable shape. The first thing is walking. I try to walk everywhere. I'd rather walk to the grocery store than drive. I use any excuse to return books to the library just to walk a couple of miles round trip. Even on days where I don't have a specific destination, I'll still make myself go out and walk for half an hour. This has become even more important with working from home. Before, when I commuted, I'd get at least a little bit of physical activity walking to and from the bus stop, running errands downtown at lunch. Now I work in my basement. The furthest I need to travel is up a flight of stairs. It's not much cardio there. The other thing I've been doing a lot more of is rock climbing. There's a climbing gym only about a mile from my house, and I can walk there. I was able to get there more this year than last year, despite the gym being closed for three months. 
I'm climbing better and stronger at the end of this year than the end of last year. And I've made progress in both years, which is great. I also do usually run some races every year. Running's been kind of a part of my life since I was a kid. However, there were no races in 2021, but I think they'll be getting back to it soon. And one of the things I've really wanted to do is get back to being able to run a six minute mile. Once the weather is a little warmer, I'm gonna head back to the local high school track to get a benchmark, and then I'll begin working throughout the year to get back to that six minute mile. So happy new year to all. Let's try to look forward to 2022. Everyone can get their booster shots and we'll all get healthier, wealthier, and happier.